in our management sessions, we often talk about the need to start with why. The question really simply is, you know, why did you help start Personal Trust? Um, and more importantly, why the name Personal Trust? We took the view that trust is inherently a personal relationship. And therefore, the moment you pursue a corporate policy which weakens the relationships, you weaken the trust, and, you, and, the, and thereby you, you damage the whole purpose of the company. It's dif difficult to imagine now, but the names Seifritz and the Board of Executives, they were giants in the financial world of South Africa. They administered the assets of a very high percentage of South Africa's wealthy clients. And we, we saw them becoming less and less personal, and we were convinced you had to stay personal in order to grow trust. You can hope and try very hard to make it profitable, but you can't prioritize profit if you're a trust company. You have to prioritize trust. So everyone knew what a trust company was. They knew what trust services were in those days. Uh, they knew what investment services were. And trust and investment services were what we intended to provide. The only new word we used for our company was personal. And we called ourselves the personal trust and investment services company. Uh, so I just want to focus a bit on the values and get your comment on the current obsession of quarterly performance in contrast to implementing a sound long-term investment strategy. I think both, both perspectives are valuable each of them in slightly different contexts. It's no use having a fantastically trusted relationship by your client towards you if eight quarters in a row your investment returns are losing money for the client. By the same token, from a client's point of view, if uh, what you're looking for is a, a trust officer and a trust company that will administer your will, administer your estate, look after a widow, assist with children's education, handle the long-term succession of, of family assets and things like that. It's no use chucking all of that out the window just because someone has a bad investment quarter. It's the fact that one is trusted is great, but it's provided you have earned that trust and are continuing to earn it on a daily basis. Trust remains always a work in progress. If there are three primary requirements, they are competence. No one wants to come to a trust company where the people aren't competent. It's got to be efficient or reliable. And as someone once said of love, the greatest of these is honesty. And the reason is very simple. We've got to be truthful about our efficiency or reliability. And we've got to be truthful about our relationship with our clients. Why do you think personal trust survived as opposed to Seifritz and BOE, apart from obviously the fact that they were swallowed up by big banks and personal trust wasn't? But I mean, what, what differentiates personal trust in the long term? I think it's what differentiated us in the 70s. The moment you get mergers and acquisitions. They were motored by the owners of those businesses seeking to generate profit for themselves. But you don't get that money out unless you sell shares. You're looking at mergers and acquisitions, you're looking at economies of scale. Uh, you're changing your systems to make them more efficient for a greater number of clients that the entity now has to look after. You can't measure a relationship effectively. And we stepped into that space and we said professionalism and trust with clients comes first and profitability will follow. That the core word that you've got to keep in touch with is personal. <laughs>